What you say accords with the Bible. But I have a question for you. Okay. Thank God. For years, we've believed in the Lord and have followed the example of Paul. We've been faithful to the name and way of the Lord. Ah, yes. And the crown of righteousness surely awaits us. Amen. Amen. We should focus on working hard for the Lord and watching for his return. Thus we can enter the kingdom of heaven. For the Bible says, they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. Amen. Amen. We believe the Lord's promise. He'll take us into the kingdom of heaven at his return. Could there really be anything wrong with this? Please fellowship with us. Okay. Okay. I approve of Pastor Yang's views. Brother Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Amen. So we work hard for the Lord and keep his name. If we watch for his arrival like this, we'll be taken into his kingdom. Amen. Nothing is wrong with this. Indeed. Sister Zhu, what you speak are the words of Paul. Indeed. Paul's words don't represent the Lord's words. Right. Paul's words don't ensure entry into God's kingdom. The Lord Jesus clearly said, only those who do the will of the Heavenly Father can enter the kingdom of heaven. And not that hard work and keeping his name awards man entry into the kingdom of heaven. We know Jesus is Lord of the kingdom of heaven. Only Lord Jesus decides who will enter his kingdom and gain a crown. Indeed. Indeed. The path we take in our belief in God should be according to the words of the Lord Jesus. Yes. If it is according to Paul, we'll be going against the Lord's will and way. Ultimately, we will only bring ruin upon ourselves. Yes. And so we'd best seek and listen to the understanding of others. Yes. Then won't it be perfectly clear? Yes, we best seek. Brothers and sisters, in watching for the arrival of the Lord, most people believe that they need only work hard for the Lord and follow the example of Paul in order to be directly taken into the kingdom of heaven when he arrives. To them it seems right to practice like this, and no one disagrees. Yet we who believe in God should always seek the truth. It may match people's conceptions, but does it match God's wishes? Is it? We should know that God's words are the principles of man's actions and the standard by which all things are measured. If people follow God's words, they'll surely receive God's approval. If they go against them and practice by their own conceptions, they will be rejected by God. As to if people can enter the kingdom of heaven by watching, waiting, and working hard for the Lord, let's look at what the Lord Jesus said in Matthew 7, 21 through 23. The Lord Jesus said, Not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And in your name have cast out devils? And in your name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. In the words of the Lord Jesus, we see that Jesus said, But he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. He did not say, All those who work hard and keep his name can enter the kingdom of heaven. Indeed. Is this not fact? Right. He didn't say hard work brings entrance to the kingdom of heaven. To me, these are our conceptions and imaginings. If it's as some think that all who work for the Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven, why did Jesus say some of those who prophesied in his name committed evil? 
Indeed. Indeed. This shows that working hard for the Lord is not necessarily the same as doing the will of God. And why is that? Because many people work hard for the Lord so that they may be blessed and not for truly obeying God. Their satanic disposition remains. They still have notions of God and oppose God. There are even some who hate the truth, the same as the Pharisees. No matter how hard they work for the Lord, how could such people do the will of God? Indeed. In nature, such people oppose God. To enter God's kingdom simply by hard work is intolerable to heaven. Don't you all agree? Indeed. Yes. 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 Then what does it mean to do God's will? Doing God's will means to obey the work of God, to view practicing God's word and obeying God as being above all else. Indeed. Thus, they can abide by God's commandments, perform their duty as required by God, and truly dedicate themselves to God without thought of what they might gain in return. All they do is practice truth, obey God. Only then do they do God's will. Oh. So that's how it is. Though they work and make great sacrifices, many of those who believe in the Lord do so in order to enter the kingdom of heaven yes. and be rewarded. It isn't to love God and obey Him. Such devotion to God is nothing more than making a deal with Him. Despite working hard for God, many people have never put the truth into practice, nor do they exalt or testify to God. Instead, they often make an idol of themselves and make others worship and follow them. Everything they do is to maintain their own position and income. Are such people those who put God's word into practice and obey God? Are they those who do the will of God? No, no they're not. They're not. No. Such people serve God, but they also oppose Him. Yes. They're the hypocritical Pharisees. It can be said that they are evildoers. How could such people enter the kingdom of heaven? No, they will not. From this we see that those who appear to be working hard for the Lord, yet have never put the truth into practice, are not testifying to God because they wish to carry out His will. Such people are not performing the will of God. They work hard to receive His blessings and enter the kingdom of heaven, yet they still oppose God. There's no change in disposition. Like the Pharisees, they pretend to be good, but will ultimately be cursed by God. Yes. Let's look at a passage of the words of Almighty God. Okay. okay. Almighty God says, I decide the destination of each man not on the basis of age, seniority, amount of suffering, or least of all, the degree of misery, but on whether they possess truth. There is no other choice but this. You must realize that all those who do not follow the will of God will be punished. This is an immutable fact. Therefore, all those who are punished are so punished for the righteousness of God and as retribution for their evil acts. Almighty God's words make it clear Entering the kingdom of heaven is not based on how much they work indeed, or suffer. Indeed. It's based on if they practiced God's words, if they follow God's commandments, and whether or not they do God's will. That's the criteria to enter God's kingdom. Their fellowship is so clear. 
And yet, there are those who blindly hold to Paul's words. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. They take Paul's fallacious views as the theoretical basis for entry into the kingdom of heaven. So regardless of how much they sacrifice, they can't receive God's approval, nor enter the kingdom of heaven. It's lucky we heard their fellowship today, or else we couldn't enter in our life. For years I've preached, yet not known how to do the Heavenly Father's will. All I knew was to work and sacrifice for the Lord. I paid no attention to seeking the Lord's will. True. Today I have discovered that nothing is more crucial than doing God's will. Indeed. Indeed. I overlooked this. I'm so ashamed. Yes, we used to all believe that if we worked hard for the Lord and to Him dedicated ourselves, then we could enter His kingdom at His return. After hearing you, I realize that our views of pursuit were wrong. Indeed. Indeed. Thanks be to God. Though we spent for the Lord and worked hard, we did not practice the Lord's words, nor obey Him. Indeed. Everything we did was in order to enter the kingdom of heaven. All was so that we might be blessed. In this, weren't we deceiving God? We, we were. were. We were. God looks within the depths of people's hearts. God is righteous and holy. Amen. Yes. How could we possibly receive God's approval in that way? Yes. Or enter the kingdom of heaven? Right. right. How lucky we are to have heard their fellowship today. We have just fellowshiped that people can only enter God's kingdom by doing the Heavenly Father's will. What then are God's requirements for watching and waiting for the Lord's arrival? Yes. Yes. Many people believe that they need only work hard, suffer as they bear the cross, keep Lord's name, by doing so, they believe they're watching and will not be forsaken by the Lord. In fact, Jesus spoke very clearly about watching and waiting. Oh, very clearly? In Matthew 25, 6, the Lord Jesus said, And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go you out to meet him. Amen. Amen. There's also Revelation 16, 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keeps his garments lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. And Revelation 3, 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Amen. In the book of Revelation are numerous mentions that he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. Amen. Amen. So great. In these prophecies, we clearly see that when he returns, during the last days, the Lord will speak to the churches. Thus the Lord asked us to be wise virgins and pay attention to His voice. People need only hear His voice and come out to welcome Him. Only then will they watch and wait for the Lord's return, attend the wedding feast of the Lamb, and be taken before God's throne. Ah, ah. Yes. Only listening to the voice of the Lord is watching and waiting. That's right. The Lord Jesus spoke so clearly. Yes, how could we have ignored this before? Indeed. The wedding feast of the Lamb refers to accepting judgment in the last days and delighting in the river of life that flows from God's throne. That is, accepting all the truths expressed by Christ of the last days and being purified by God into an overcomer. Only overcomers will enter the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. Yes. Thanks be to the Lord. So that's what it means to go to the wedding feast. Today, Christ of the last days Almighty God expresses all truths for man's salvation. 
Almighty God's words are now online for people in places all over the world to seek and examine. By seeking and examining the words and work of Almighty God, those wise virgins have recognized God's voice and returned before the throne yes. of God. Yes. Only such people have attended the wedding feast of the Lamb, are the overcomers God will make before the disaster. Amen. So great. Only these people will enter the kingdom of heaven. Amen. 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 Wonderful. Those who hear Almighty God's word are blessed. Yes. These are who go to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Indeed. Right. They are the overcomers whom God will make. Indeed. Thanks be to the Lord. But many believe watching and waiting for the Lord's coming only involves working hard for the Lord. They do not seek the truth in the big issue of the coming of the Lord. They cling to their conceptions and imaginings and refuse to hear God's voice and will never behold the appearance of the Lord. Watching and waiting in this way, then, is neither real nor meaningful. Indeed. It is meaningless. Indeed. Indeed. Watching and waiting has nothing to do with people's actions. What's key is if they can hear the Lord's voice, if they welcome the Lord's return. Whether they can achieve this standard is really what's key. Amen. So that's what it means to watch and wait. Everyone, let's read more of the words of Almighty God. Yes, let's. Yes, let's. Almighty God says, The return of Jesus is a great salvation for those who are capable of accepting the truth. But for those who are unable to accept the truth, it is a sign of condemnation. You should choose your own path and should not blaspheme against the Holy Spirit and reject the truth. You should not be an ignorant and arrogant person but someone who obeys the guidance of the Holy Spirit and longs for and seeks the truth. Only in this way will you benefit. I advise you to tread the path of belief in God with care. Do not jump to conclusions. What's more, do not be casual and carefree in your belief in God. You should know that, at the very least, those who believe in God should be humble and reverential. Those who have heard the truth and yet turn their nose up at it are foolish and ignorant. Those who have heard the truth and yet carelessly jump to conclusions or condemn it are beset by arrogance. No one who believes in Jesus is qualified to curse or condemn others. You should all be someone who is rational and accepts the truth. Amen. 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 Today, the incarnate Almighty God performs judgment of the last days. Through expressing the truth, Almighty God reveals each kind of man and God's sheep will hear the voice of God. All those who seek and examine the true way and accept the truth are to be saved by God. Amen. Amen. At the same time, God reveals those wicked people who are arrogant and do not accept the truth, as well as the antichrists who condemn and blaspheme against Almighty God. These people are all condemned and eliminated by God. Today, the work of God become flesh has almost reached its end. The work of judgment beginning from the house of God has basically finished. What? what? Huh? God's work will soon end. So the work of the church's rapture will finish very soon. Wise virgins should right away examine Almighty God's work of the last days. Otherwise, the doors of salvation shall close. If you wait till the Lord publicly appears whilst riding upon a cloud, you might be thinking of the Lord's words, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. I don't know whether these words mean receiving God's approval or being condemned by God. Hmm. I remember. 
These words were spoken by Jesus to Thomas. Indeed. Indeed. They are a reminder of how dumb and wrong we were and how we watched and waited for the Lord. We almost missed it. Thanks be to the Lord. God is gracious to us. Today, you have testified to us of Almighty God's work. This is an opportunity from God. Indeed. Indeed. Everyone, let's accept Almighty God's work of the last days now. No more shall we delay, as this is clearly the work of God. Right. right. How dumb we were to get stuck in endless examination. Right.